everyone. I'm back today to do a review of Project 17. This is by Lori Faria Scholars. And it tells a story of a high school student by the name of Derek. He's going to be entering a film contest in the hopes that if he wins, it'll help, uh, help him avoid having to run his parents' diner for the rest of his life. Um, it's, the winning video is going to be appearing on real life TV. So that'd be an excellent break for him. And, uh, he comes up with the idea to take a group of students uh, break in and stay overnight at, at the town's abandoned mental asylum. Yes, creepy. Um, this is actually um, a map included within the book of the interior, um, all the different annexes and stuff of the mental institution. So that's a real nice touch because it helps you um, follow along and, and know where they are within the asylum as you're reading the story. So he sets about trying to gather this group together, and he starts out with his really good friend Chet. Now, for Chet, any excuse to get out of his, his house and away from his alcoholic father is all good. So he's he's on board right away. We have another character by the name of Mimi. She's sort of like a goth girl. Um, she actually has ulterior motives for wanting to join the group, and you find that out as you read the story. Our next two characters are Greta and Tony. They are part of the drama club and kind of aspiring actors. And they see this as a possible big break. Maybe, maybe they'll get a chance to get some television exposure and, and become famous. So, yeah, they're definitely in on it. And our last character is a young girl by the name of Lisa. Ever since she was born, her parents have pretty much decided she's going to be a doctor. They've set her on this path. And she's an excellent student, has, has perfect grades, straight A, but her application to Harvard was turned down. And according to her counselor, it's because she doesn't have an ex any, any at all curricular extracurricular activities on her application. He says, you need to get out there and do something else. Join a club, do something. But it's kind of getting late in the year, and her first instinct is possibly drama club, Maybe she could do design sets or something like that. But most of those projects have already um, been set and done for the year. And when she runs into Greta and Tony, they tell her about Derek's project. And she decides that that's maybe her only choice. So she goes ahead and decides to join the group. So we have our six characters, um, Derek, Chet, Mimi, Greta, Tony, and Lisa. And uh, I really like the character development. They're all they're all quite likable, with the possible exception of Greta Um She's a little bit too into herself, worried too much about like getting maximum screen time within this film, um, so she gets the best exposure and everything like that. But you still end up caring about about the all the individual characters. Um, it the setting. <laughs> talk about of all the great places, an abandoned mental asylum. This um, overnight creepiness. Um, there's obviously no power there, so the only lights they have are little flashlights or headlamps that they carry with them. Uh, this place is believed to be the birthplace of the lobotomy. It's believed to be haunted. There are uh, patient files and possessions strewn all over the place. Uh, there's apparently unmarked graves in the surrounding grounds. Um, definitely creepy, kind of falling apart. And it's great because it's like perfect timing because right now I'm watching season two of Bedlam on BBC America, and it's about an abandoned mental institution. It's not being torn down like the one is in this book but it's being turned into luxury apartments, and they have a lot of flashbacks to events that took place in the hospital, which were quite gruesome and gory, and they did experiments, and that's kind of what you get the impression um, took place in this locale within the book. So it put a really good visual image on top of what the author does with the description in the book herself. Um, this is more of a psychological horror. It's not your typical slash and gore fest, uh, it's, which is not usually the type I care for anyway. This, uh, in this case, the author plays upon your irrational fears of things that are going bump in the night, your fear of darkness, something moving out of the corner of your eye, the little creep factor that something's behind you, and about to grab you, you know, that kind of feeling. And it builds throughout the book from the, from the very first pages when he's thinking about um, filming on, on this location to the very end. Um, just, just the right, right uh, perfect setting. And um, I like the way the author shifts points of view between all six characters. So... At the beginning of each chapter, she'll start with that person's name, so you know, you know who you're, who's speaking or whose thoughts you're, you're uh, listening in on. And but the characters are so well developed, you almost don't even need that. I, I knew kind of right away who who I was paying attention to, and uh, I just really like I like the writing style, the pacing of it, the setting was perfect. It just had the right amount of creepy chill factor for it, so I definitely recommend it if you get a chance. And you're looking for something. Again, not slash and gore like a Nightmare on Elm Street type thing. A um, little bit more of the psychological chills. Definitely worth picking up. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy.